to the extent that Ms. Scanlon says that uh, Commissioner Lucky uh, said something to, to her to the effect of, you know, you, you let those those boys down. That's not an interpretation, is it? That's that's a, a statement of fact. Uh, Absolutely. And I did not recall. I, I never I don't recall. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just don't recall um, that particular statement. Do you not think that if it was said, you would uh, you would probably have noted that because it would be a wildly inappropriate thing for the commissioner of the RCMP to say to the Nova Scotia director of strategic communication? Would that not be memorable? It it should have been if it was said. I just don't recall it. Okay. Now, obviously, what would what would really uh, clear this issue up would be if there was some sort of um, like an audio recording of that meeting, that would be of great assistance, would it not? It would leave absolutely no doubt what was said and how it was said, yes. Right. And uh, who's Dan Bryan? Dan Bryan is a uh, member of the National Headquarters Communications um, Team. And uh, was he participating in that phone call on April 28th, 2020? Yes. And what, if anything, do you know about uh, the possibility that, that Mr. Bryan uh, recorded that meeting? I, I am aware that um, that uh, Mr. Bryan um, had recorded. I can't. I don't know if it was all of the meeting, but but partial parts of the meeting, and I did not find that out till um, sometime spring of this year. I, I didn't know that that. Uh, that had existed or that uh, he undertook um, to record that uh, that call. Right. And uh, you say spring of this year. So you're talking about like April and May or, yeah. or around the time that we were discussing the, the revelation of uh, Superintendent Campbell's notes. Was it around that time that, that you were alerted to the fact that Dan Bryan may have recorded that meeting? Yeah, I, I believe it was post that. So probably the April, May is, is my recollection. Right. And to the extent that, that you were alerted to the fact that there's a recording of, of that meeting, um, I note that at no point in your, your interview with the Mass Casualty Commission, did you make any mention of that? No, no. And did you not think that it would be, you know, given the fact that you've now testified, you know, before the, uh, you know, the standing committee in, in Ottawa, and we've obviously dedicated a, an extraordinary amount of time to this issue here. Um, did you not think that it would be of assistance to mention that, by the way, uh, we think there may be a, a recording of that meeting that would really clear up this glaring discrepancy between the accounts? I, I don't I don't disagree. It It, it never came up. Um, in terms of um, in terms of the meeting, and I, I don't have a whole lot of information about the recording. I do know that there's a uh, there's an investigation into uh, the recording. You know, where is it? Can it be retrieved? Uh, I know that there's uh, um, uh, an internal investigation taking place, but I'm not privy to the uh, to the details of it. I was basically just informed that it appears that Dan Bryan recorded either all or all or part of that conversation, um, and that it's being looked into further. And I believe I believe I also was advised early on that apparently the recording uh, doesn't exist anymore. Anymore. Uh, anymore. And do you have any information that would explain why it no longer exists? I don't. Um, I believe it was. I believe it was because uh, it doesn't exist because uh, Mr. Bryan has uh, has deleted it from whatever phone he was using at the time. But I see. So, uh, so this has been under investigation since the spring of 2022. Um. I don't know when the when the exact investigation uh, started. I, I just know that uh, it was brought to brought to my attention as another 
uh, another fact in, in, in the matter and that uh, the internal processes were, were going to be put in place to investigate, you know, where the recording is, does it still exist? Can we obtain it? You know, all of the, all of those types of things, which right. is not, it's not falling under my core responsibilities in terms of the deputy commissioner level. How much investigation is required to, uh, to track down Mr. Bryan and say, where is that recording? And if you deleted it, um, why? And if it's deleted from a device, give us that device. It doesn't strike me, and maybe I'm missing something, as a particularly complicated issue if it was recorded by uh, a senior staff member at, uh, at the RCMP. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that complicated to say these are the things we should, that, that should be done to do that. Um, I just can't speak to where they are in that process. If, you know, if the recording is, is deleted from his phone, is there an ability in investigation wise to technically retrieve it? Like, I don't know if it's sitting in a cloud base. I don't know. Like, I don't have any of any of that information. So there, there may be steps that are being taken um, uh, around investigation, privacy, uh, you know, potentially, you know, getting a uh, search warrant to search a phone. I don't have any of that uh, background information in terms of required steps um, to, to find out where the recording is, retrieve it, what his intentions were. Has he? I don't even know if Mr. Bryan has yet been interviewed. Um, if if we are able to retrieve a, a copy of that that recording, how confident are you that uh, uh, it will? bear out the version of that conversation that you've described if the recording is the entirety of the uh of the conversation so the entire thing it would bring absolute clarity um to all the questions that are being asked um by not only the, the mass casualty commission by the the sec u etc it there would be no doubt no room for interpretation if it's there in its entirety. 